Good morning, everybody. Matt Moda here with Odds Jam. Let's hammer some MLB bets for today, Friday, March 31st. So in this video, I'm going to give you my favorite MLB bets while also talking to you about MLB betting strategy because with the season now just starting, it's very important to get these profitable MLB strategies down so you are ready to cash throughout the entire summer when all of the other sports end. The MLB season is exactly one day old, and so far, not so bad. Had a pretty good day yesterday, up about $484. Now, obviously, not all of these bets were specifically with the um, with the MLB. Now, I will say the day started pretty rough. Lost my first four bets, then lost my next two after winning one. Then I started to catch a hot streak, and I really came on towards the end. Now, obviously not all of these bets that I came on at the end were baseball, but some pretty awesome plus money MLB player runs props that hit in the uh, in the Padres versus Rockies game. And then obviously had to back Shohei Otani, hit an alt under, was a pretty good day yesterday. So let's get into it today. The first play that we are going to lock in here is in the Cleveland Guardians versus Seattle Mariners game. And we are locking in the first half total runs to go over four and a half. Now, this is something that was tracked a lot last year. These alternate run totals, specifically for the first half, I had incredible success with last year. First half over, first half under. Any type of alternate run total, specifically in the first half, like I said, I had a lot, a lot of success with. So I'm hoping that is something that is going to carry on in this season. Starting off with this play here. Again, we are looking at Cleveland Guardians versus Seattle Mariners. First half total runs to go over four and a half, plus 130 odds at FanDuel. So the play, number one, it's positive. Expected value, right? Showed up on the Odds Jam positive EV page. Odds Jam prices the perfect line of this one, the true line, to be about plus 128, essentially just below plus 128. And these odds are incredibly important because they're pulled from the sharpest sports books in the world, right? So wherever you see odds under the no big odds column, that's why we view them as the true line, the perfect line of a market, because again, they're pulled from the sharpest sports books in the world. So anywhere in which we can get better odds, and better odds just means like higher payout than these no vague odds, is something that will be profitable in the long run. Now, I don't just blindly hammer every single play that shows up on the EV page, right? I want to make sure that I am placing the best of the best. And all I do for that is if you click view event page and open it in a new tab, it pulls up the page that you see here, which is just the, the total market for the game that you're looking for. So like instead of looking specifically at over under four and a half, it pulls up like where everything is priced. And what you can also do on this page is click this button here that says show no big odds. That does exactly what it sounds like. It removes the VIG from all of these sports books that are pricing it. So what we're looking to see here is, okay, do the odds of the bet we are placing beat the fair odds, the no VIG line of every other book that is pricing it? And the answer is yes, right? We locked it in at plus 130 at FanDuel. BetMGM, plus 123. BetRivers, plus 127. And the most important one, Pinnacle right here at plus 126. So yes, this plus 130 is a good price. So I locked it in on FanDuel. Guardians, Mariners, first half over four and a half, plus 130 odds at FanDuel, found on the positive expected value page. The next tool that I used to find a play was the arbitrage tool. Now, for those of you watching this, you're probably familiar, but an arbitrage opportunity exists when you can bet both sides of the same exact outcome, like an over or an under, and guarantee profit. So the play that we locked in, we're going to the Rockies-Padres game in the over seven and a half total runs, minus 110 odds at Caesars. So this is a direct ARB to Pinnacle Sportsbook. And as I mentioned, Pinnacle is the sharpest sports book in the world. So an arbitrage, like I said, is when you can bet both sides. But generally, when there is a betting scenario where you can bet both sides of a market to guarantee profit, one of, if not both, of the odds of this play has to be an outlier, right? Sports books don't want to have a scenario where you can literally bet both sides in profit. They don't want that. So when that happens, there's got to be some sort of discrepancy. So positive EV betting, arbitrage betting, for different reasons, we're taking advantage of discrepancies amongst the sports books. So when you have an arbitrage opportunity, 
what you want to do is same thing that you do in the positive EV page, right? You want to click into the play, review the odds of the bet you're placing to the other sports books. We locked it in at minus 110. FanDuel is close at minus 114. Granted, it's not an ARB because Pinnacle has plus 111. So the ARB exists because the plus 111 is a bigger number than the minus 110, right? But FanDuel is close at minus 114. But look at every other book. In the minus 120s up to minus 125 with Circa being a sharp sports book at minus 125. And then of course, Pinnacle being the sharpest sports book also at minus 125. That's the sign that this minus 110 is in fact a really good play. So I locked it in. This is play number two for this video. We have a first half alternate total. We have a full game total. And then my last play we locked in is in the player strikeouts market. And we are locking in Nick Martinez to go under four and a half strikeouts, minus 106 odds at FanDuel. So the logic for this play is the same as every other play. We locked it in at minus 106. Compare the minus 106 to all of the other sports books. So in this case, Pinnacle is the one that is close. But what I will say for a uh, non-player prop market, a main line or an alternate market, Pinnacle is almost universally regarded as the source of truth. That's not the case with player props. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. They are not bad with player props. Don't So don't get that in your mind, right? They're not bad with player props, but they're also not the source of truth. So when I'm betting on player props, I will look more into the majority of the sports books than I will with a uh, total or something like that. So if I'm betting a non-player prop and it's not positive EV to pinnacle, I won't place it. That is not the case with player props. So there is a little bit of a distinction there. The books that I will look at for player props, I'll look at some of the main uh, regulated sports books like a bet MGM, Caesars, DraftKings, especially DraftKings. They're actually surprisingly good with player props. So let's compare minus 106 at FanDuel. We see minus 140, minus 149, minus 130, minus 127, minus 129. And then bet online close at minus 122. And then Pinnacle obviously being the one that is closest to FanDuel. But this is an outlier to the majority of sports books, which is why it's something that I recommend locking in. So Nick Martinez under four and a half strikeouts, minus 106 at FanDuel is my third and final pick for this video. So if you're locking in these three plays, comment and let me know. We'd love to hear it. Other than that, please remember, hit me up on my uh, Twitter handle that you see on the screen here. A lot of times, if I don't, am I'm not able to make a YouTube video for a play, I'll just tweet it out. So make sure to follow me there. And that's it. So enjoy the MLB slate today and have a good one.